Hi, everyone. I'm Daniel Spinola, and I'm going to be talking to you about the plasma radiation diagnostics tool I've made for the centrifugal mirror fusion experiment, which I will now be referring to as CMFX. But first, what exactly is fusion? Fusion is essentially the combination of two light nuclei. Typically, these are hydrogen isotopes like deuterium and tritium. You smash them together and create a heavier nuclei. Uh, now, during this process, you usually expel a neutron as well as a lot of energy. However, to make fusion happen, uh, the conditions are a bit extreme. We actually need to be at around 100 million degrees, uh, which is actually hotter than the center of the sun. So the CMFX, uh, what it's really trying to do is conceptually prove the idea of net positive fusion in a commercially viable way. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, essentially, it is pretty cost efficient and uh, relatively simple to maintain compared to other fusion experiments. Uh, now, it's important to note that our experiment is dealing with plasma, and this is an ionized gas. It's essentially like working with lightning. So to contain this plasma, we actually have two superconductive MRI magnets, each with a magnetic field of around three Tesla. And if you don't know, that is uh, quite a large magnetic field. Running through the middle of this, is a conductor at a high voltage, which is surrounded by a casing, which is grounded. This creates an electric field. And once we have an electric field and a magnetic field, E cross V uh, means a force rotates our plasma. So we're working with plasma, right? That's something you can't usually touch and grab and measure like most other physical properties. Uh, so we need special techniques such as Thompson scattering. This is a non-invasive diagnostics, meaning that we're be able to gain information from our plasma without actually disrupting any of its properties. Um, and using Thomson scattering, we will actually be able to find things such as the temperature and density of our plasma. Uh, as you can see in the diagram below, uh, we're essentially shooting a light into the plasma. It hits an electron and it scatters out. And at a 90 degrees maximum, uh, we're actually able to measure these parameters locally. Uh, and at the plane perpendicular from where we shoot the incident light, uh, we're actually going to look for a Doppler shifted light, which is the signal we're looking for. So then what's the problem? You know, we keep referring to this idea of plasma and like lightning. Uh, our plasma flashes and radiates light. And that means that our Thomson scattering signal can actually be masked. So the solution is to make a diagnostics tool that can measure the background radiation of the plasma to see if we can uh, find our Thomson scattering signal. Now, as you can see here, uh, I've made a diagnostics tool. Um, I've actually not made just one, but two of them. The other one is on the table and you'll be able to see these uh, a little bit closer during the poster presentation. But what it consists of is a tube and this will be attached to the CMFX uh, looking into a window where the plasma is. Now, if I remove this tube, you're going to see the inside structure. Essentially, there is a lens here that is going to collect light from the plasma and focus it onto this aluminum box, which has a photodiode sticking out. Along the path, there are a couple of filters uh, on the physical one I have in hand. There are the filters on, and on the PowerPoint, you can see they're off. This is because they're actually interchangeable. We're gonna be using a variety of combinations of filters in order to gain uh, information of our plasma. It is important to note that this device is non-magnetic uh, because it will be next to giant magnets and it would be quite a problem if my device got stuck to a magnet. <laughs> So as you can see here on the left, we have uh, what you'd call a avalanche photodiode and well on the right, a in-gas photodiode. Uh, now these two photodiodes have different properties. As you can see, the avalanche is between 400 and 1100 nanometers. This means it's more towards the visible light range as to our in-gas photodiode, which is within 800 and around 1700 nanometers. This means it's more towards infrared. Now, all these lines of different colors uh, indicate different combinations of filters that I can use with uh, our, my hardware. 
uh, each one, as you can see, is narrowing down the wavelength band. And this allows me to spe see specific regions of light that our plasma is emitting. Uh, as you can see, they're in different regions. And this essentially allows me to eventually reconstruct the spectra of the plasma as a general shape. So once I actually uh, order these photodiodes and filters, I have to test them. Um, I am testing these photodiodes to get as much signal as I can uh, with as little noise as possible, you know, as most physicists try to do. Uh, these photodiodes work in a range of voltages. And um, so I tested them uh, to optimize the gain to noise ratio. And I also tested different load resistors uh, to make sure I could get as much uh, signal without getting any uh, weird things. And the image here is the typical setup I would use. Here I would have a light source. Um, typically it was actually my iPhone flashlight, but you know, it's a bit hard to take a picture of your phone while you're using it to take a picture. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna be using a light bulb. Uh, then uh, just like my normal hardware device, there is a lens that uh, focuses the light onto a photodiode, except this time, uh, it's on a breadboard circuit, so I can easily manipulate the circuit and um, make the changes I need to. Uh, the result is the inside of the aluminum box, which is a soldered circuit uh, with a little hole where the photodiode can stick out. Uh, what exactly are these circuits? Uh, you can see them here. And it's important to note that uh, they have a couple of different properties. The avalanche photodiode works at 165 volts compared to the in-gas, uh, which only works at a, a measly five volts. So quite a difference in voltage usage. Um, it is important to note there are a couple of similarities though. Both contain uh, RC filters and this is to limit noise. And both of them have uh, load resistors on the right. And this is what is connected to the oscilloscope which reads out a signal in voltages. And here you can see an example of what I'd see for my oscilloscope. Essentially, I cover the photodiode so no light is hitting it. I let some light pass through and then I quickly cover it again. Uh, because I was using my iPhone uh, light, uh, you can see that the avalanche uh, had a very big response about uh, 20 volts. And this is because as we said before, the avalanche is better with visible light. Uh, while the in-gas uh, is at around 100, millivolts, which is, uh, again, reasonable because we'd expect that to work better with the infrared, which uh, an iPhone does not typically emit. Uh, so in conclusion, I've uh, made uh, two hardware de devices. I've designed, uh, made, and calibrated them to measure light from spectra and be able to uh, reconstruct the spectra of a plasma. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge all these people. Special thank you to the CMFX team for letting me work with them and to Dr. Serrano for uh, letting uh, me be part of Trend and uh, keeping things running. Thank you.